What is up, weather enthusiasts? I'm your host, Pat's Path Predictor. Let's get right into the weather. All right, so here's the situation we have for you right here, ladies and gentlemen. We have this new area of interest that now has a 60% chance of development in the next seven days that is continuing to organize and develop in off the coast of Africa. But before we get into that, we need to talk about Hurricane Lee for a few minutes because things are getting pretty interesting and we're continuing to see more and more updates of a potential U.S. impact with this. So here's what we have going on. Here is the situation with Hurricane Lee. We're going to go ahead and pull up the public advisory right here. Maximum sustained winds remain 120 miles per hour, leaves a Category 3 hurricane. Hurricane force winds now extend out 75 miles from the center, and tropical storm force winds extend out 185 miles from the center. And, yeah, this thing is continuing to grow in, in, in size. Minimum central pressure is down to, to 948 millibars uh, over here. It is currently moving northwest at 8 miles per hour, so it is continuing to slow down. It is expected to start turning in the next couple of days. We're going to go ahead and show you the cone right here because now it appears that the United States is now in uh, getting close to the cone of uncertainty right here, as is Bermuda. So here's what we have going on. It is forecast to remain a major hurricane until Wednesday, and then Wednesday evening it starts weakening into a hurricane as it moves into through that cold wake. And then it starts to accelerate at a very, very fast pace up towards New England, up towards Nova Scotia and Canada. So this could potentially be a very big impact by a, by a pretty large hurricane. If we go ahead and show you the latest we have right here, we're looking at an 80 mile per hour hurricane, 120 hours out. It is forecast to re-strengthen to a category four hurricane in the next 24 hours. However, this thing has been having some very prevalent wind shear issues uh, th since the very beginning, ever since it became a cat five a few days ago. This thing, was uh, this thing has been kind of riddled with wind shear. So right now it's a bit of uncertainty of what's going to happen, so, but we will keep an eye on it if we go ahead and show you some of the sa the satellite imagery right here still looks like a decent structure overall however it is continuing to fight that shear that is continuing that is to the north of it so this is something we need to definitely pay attention to over the next few days or so but next we're going to go ahead and show you uh, the latest area of interest we have from the nhc over here this is the area of interest right here. Then question, it is moving towards this area of interest, 97L. It is expected to merge uh, with this new AOI over here and potentially organize that at a, de at a decent pace. Now we're going to go ahead and show you what the NHC is saying. This is as of 8 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time. A tropical wave located over the far eastern tropical Atlantic between the Cabo Verde Islands and the west coast of Africa is producing disorganized showers and thunderstorms. Environmental condu conditions appear conducive for gradual development of the system and a tropical depression could form by the weekend while it moves westward to west northwestward at 15 to 20 miles per hour over the central tropical atlantic 60 percent chance of formation in the next seven days right now it's a near zero percent chance in the next 48 hours so this is a multi-day process that we'll have to continue to monitor as time continues to go on so that's the situation we have according to the nhc and now we're going to go ahead and show you some ensemble models as they show up right here this is the european zero z as, as we are showing you, this is the European continuing to have Lee, at, at least to some extent, strengthening before it starts making that turn right there, continuing to grow in size. And then it starts moving due north and then starts to approach the uh, it's approach Nova Scotia, approaches New England. However, the European's been picking up on something. It has been picking up on a high pressure ridge building up once again to the, nor uh, to the north of west of New northeast of Newfoundland, excuse me which could potentially turn this thing into into New England and could bring a lot of very big impacts to areas like Massachusetts, Connecticut, Rhode Island, Vermont, New Hampshire, Maine, and then Nova Scotia before making landfall near the U.S.-Canadian border. This is the Zero-Z European, and this is, only, this is less than six days out by the time it approaches New England. So, yeah, this is something I'm co continuing to take very, very seriously as more and more data continues to come in. So that's the European right here. Next one we're going to go ahead and show you is the GFS. GFS has this thing continuing to organize, strengthen, and then it makes that turn, starts weakening. However, it is 
kind of picking up on a similar situation to that the European is, it starts to bring a lot of impacts to the New England, again, in Massachusetts, Maine, uh, Maine, New Hampshire, Connecticut, Rhode Island, before making landfall again near the U.S.-Canadian border. If you ever see the European and GFS agree on something track-wise, that's always never a good sign according to this right here. So that's the GFS when it comes to Lee. Next one we're showing you is the CMC. Here's the 00Z right here. CMC, similar situation to the Euro and GFS, although it does have an ending uh, pushing a little bit further to the east, just off the coast of Maine and Massachusetts, before making landfall near Halifax in Nova Scotia right here, and then becoming extra tropical as it continues to push further north. So that's the CMC. Next one we're showing you is the NavGem. NavGem has this thing doing a similar situation to all the models right here. It actually has it making landfall on the U on in Maine near the U.S. Canadian border. Before but before it does that, it brings quite a lot of impacts to to Maine. It brings a lot of impacts to Massachusetts, a lot of impacts to New Hampshire, Rhode Island, Vermont, Connecticut. So. Based off of all the models we're seeing right now, it does appear that New England is going to get impacted by this system right here, which if that were to happen, these they are not built for anything, anything hurricane related. They're mainly built for winter weather and in some cases severe weather and not even that. Now that we're showing you the icon, similar situation, although it hasn't moving further to the east, maybe bringing impacts to Maine before making landfall near Halifax and Nova Scotia right here. So that's the situation we have with the models with Hurricane Lee. Now we're going to go ahead and show you the models uh, runs once again, kind of for that new area of interest that is being designated by the NHC. This is the European, this is the AOI right here. Has it starting to organize and potentially develop, and then afterward it has it strengthening up into a tropical storm, if not a hurricane, by the time it moves north of the Lesser Antilles. There is a high pressure system, there is a bit of a ridge starting to build up here. We'll go ahead and show you the height norm anomalies. If we can see that more and more the, uh, this ridge starts to build up in the coming days or so, this will push the system further and further to the west. So we'll have to wait and see how the ridge and how the trough act in the next few model runs for sure. Next one we're showing you is the GFS, and this is a pretty interesting run as well. The GFS has this thing organizing and developing and then quickly strengthening in the main development region, reaching hurricane strength by the time it gets to the Lesser Antilles, brings some potential impacts to both the Lesser Antilles, the Virgin Islands, Puerto Rico, the Dominican Republic, Haiti, and the Bahamas before it starts to make a bit of a turn. However, if we go ahead and show you the 500 millibar height anomalies, there is a pretty big ridge building up near in Quebec and uh, parts of Ontario. So... What that's ultimately going to end up doing is it's going to end up driving the system towards the United States, towards landfall in the Carolinas, into Virginia, into the Maryland and Delaware, Chesapeake Bay area right there. Keep in mind, by the time it approaches the U.S., it's 300 hours out, so take this with a grain of salt. But basically, if we go ahead and go, ba uh, go back to about five days out, this thing does start to organize and it does start to develop as we look at this. So this is a very interesting situation that's going to play out. Depending on how this ridge and how this trough plays out, according to what we're seeing, is really going to depend on how where this thing goes. Unfortunately, the trough and the ridge part of the model are the most unpredictable parts of it. So we'll have to continue to monitor it for sure. Next one and last one we're going to go ahead and show you is the CMC. This is the zero. CMC. There's the thing organizing and develop strengthens up to a category one hurricane quite early on. However, the CMC has this thing continuing to move out to sea as it's calling for a weaker Bermuda and Azores high at this point. So there is some a bit of disagreement with the models so far. However, the European and GFS are agreeing more, with more of a, a, nor, a westward favorable portion of this of this at this time. So we'll have to keep an eye on it in the coming days, and we'll continue to update you here on the Pat's Path Predictor channel. Now we're going to go ahead and show you some of the conditions that we're looking at. Here's the conditions for both Lee and in this new area of interest. Where Lee is right now, it's still in very, very, very warm water right now, 29 plus degrees Celsius as it's approaching that turn. However, by the time it enters the cold wake, it, we, it cools down to about 26, 25 degrees Celsius, which is about 77 to 79 degrees Fahrenheit for those of you who live in the United States over here and do not use the metric system. So... 
that's what we have water wise and with the ocean heat content where lee is it's in decent ohc around 125 ohc and where this new area of interest is it's going to start off in a little bit of weaker ohc around 25 to 50 ocean heat content however if it as it continues to move further to the west the ocean heat content gradually increases as the water depth of 80 plus degree fahrenheit continues to get deeper and deeper and deeper the further west you go out in the main development region now we're going to go ahead and show you the wind shear this where lee is right now it's been continuing to encounter a lot and a lot of wind shear we're looking at around 20 to 30 knots of wind shear just north of the system now a huge a big chunk of this is likely outflow but even if you take that out it's still battling quite a bit of wind shear and that's why this thing hasn't really re-strengthened at all this whole wind shear pattern this whole unfavorable wind shear pattern was quite unexpected just a few days ago so this is definitely something we need to monitor going forward at this point now we're going to go ahead and lastly show you some hurricane models according to what we have we're going to go ahead and start with the h dwarf when it comes to lee this is the 6z lee run right here the h dwarf has this thing fluctuating in intensity but growing in size keeping it around category three maybe category four intensity before making that turn and then starting to make a massive push north uh, northward west of Bermuda. However, as time continues to go on, the cooler water finally catches up to it and it starts weakening considerably as it's approaching New England. So that's the H Wharf right there. Next one we're showing you is the H Mon. We're showing you the 6Z as well. The H Mon, well, to be, uh, this is where, this was 72 hours ago, the HMON continuing to fluctuate in intensity, although it does call for some strengthening, but it maintains it around category 3 intensity as it think this thing starts to turn northward, and then it moves west of Bermuda. It continues to weaken further and further as it approaches New England, primarily due to the cooler waters and extreme wind shear that this thing is going to encounter. Halfs A right here, this is what we got going on. The half say has been pretty interesting to say at the very least. Half say has this thing strengthening potentially up to a category four at some point. However, by the time it makes that turn, it is forecast to, yes, get a lot larger, but it's also forecast to get quite a bit weaker as well. So this is something we need to continue to monitor. Pressure of 961. By the time we're at five days out, it's already a category one hurricane at this point. Last thing we're going to go ahead and show you is the halves B right here. This is what we got pulled, pulled up right here. Things continue to organize, potentially strengthen a bit to Category 4 intensity, pressure down to 932. However, it's expected to undergo a couple of eyeball replacement cycles and then starts to make that turn more and more to the north where that'll start weakening it due to the cooler waters. Moves west of Bermuda. They could definitely get some tropical storm force winds from this. And then it approaches New England as a Category 2 or Category 1 hurricane at this point in time so that's the situation we have going on in the atlantic right now we're going to keep you updated here in the pat's path predictor channel but with that being said we're going to go ahead and close the video out right here i hope you enjoyed it be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you are new it helps us out and helps us make more videos like these the goal of this channel is to get more people engaged with weather but with that being said have a wonderful day guys stay safe